everyone. North Korea's decision to join Russia's invasion of Ukraine uh, continues to be front and center across various news sources. What I still don't understand is why is everybody so surprised? Guys, hello? You have been told numerous times by many people who are very well versed in the history of the region and the history between Russia and Ukraine that this is not going to end there. You have been told many times this is going to spill over not just into Europe, but outside of Europe. It can go to Asia. It already has impacts in uh, South America. It already has impacts in Africa. So why does this surprise you? Now, this is cute. NATO says North Korean troops may be headed to front line. Really? Are we back to trying to figure out desperately? Hmm, what is it exactly that North Korean troops are going to be doing there? Why or why have them, have they picked up and gone to Russia? Maybe they're just there again to share the secrets of North Korean cuisine. Come on, there's nothing maybe about it. We know what they're there for. So, wake up and smell the roses, or in this case, smell the ballistic missiles. The biggest statement from the Pentagon has been this. They're saying that North Korean troops fighting in this war uh, would be fair game in terms of being military targets. Well, gee, guys, thanks a lot. I mean, you know, considering you already had Ukraine hamstrung um, across the board, thank you for at least letting them know that it's okay to defend themselves against uh, a bunch of mercenaries who for some reason, well, we know why, uh, want to jump into this idiocy. Now, here's something in addition to the statement um, that U.S. is not going to impose any new restrictions. Um, so far, the estimate coming from Ukraine is 650,000 Russian soldiers who were killed or wounded in this war. This is, again, according to Ukrainian estimates. Um, we know that Trump's plan for uh, ending this war is to withdrawing all help from Ukraine, possibly withdrawing the U.S. from NATO. And here we have another town, in this case Vovchonsk, with almost 80% of the buildings destroyed or damaged in the Russian attacks. The reason I brought up that summary is to remind everybody what, that this is still going on. There's also been a big hit against Kharkiv, uh, damaging uh, a, uh, some of the historic landmarks in the center of the city. And um, this is going on across the board. Ukrainian civilians are getting pummeled every single day. This is not just something that they're observing that it, do not have any illusion that the war is just uh, concentrated around the front lines. No, all of Ukraine right now is a war zone. And since Russia has no restrictions of any kind imposed on it, it has no problem using long distance missiles against Ukraine. So nowhere in Ukraine right now is safe. In the past, people from the South and the east at least had some place to go now they have nowhere else to go also a reminder to folks that basically the way international laws work somebody is not considered a refugee until they're physically running with either some kind of a natural disaster or enemy army on their heels so people like my parents, for example, can't leave, even if they had somewhere to go. They cannot leave and go to another country on a refugee status because technically they're not refugees, even though they have had more bombs dropped on them than some people who have been in active combat. Meanwhile, of course, North Korea, a North Korean government continues playing footsie with Russia. They're exchanging visits and saying everything is happening within the framework of a strategic dialogue, which is bullshit, of course. 
you know, there, theirs is a relationship of convenience. They both have something the other wants, and that is why they're collaborating. Apparently, North Korean government doesn't care if they lose a few th thousand of their own people, if Russia gives them money and uh, additional weapons technologies. Now, this is mentioned across the board, but I like this guy. So, Finland's leader went to talk to China because we know China is there. They're in the region. They have borders both with uh, North Korea and with Russia. And, of course, we know that they have been supporting Russia in this war. So, they went to the one of the bigger players. So... President Alexander Stubb uh, basically went and uh, told um, Xi Jinping what a lot of people are already thinking. Namely, that North Korea becoming entangled in this is going to make things more complicated for the continent. China already has a complicated relationship with Europe. Um, there is a tariff um, argument going on right now. Um, China already has a complicated relationship with the United States, and this is making it worse. Now, Finland is one of the newest NATO members, and Russia actually blamed Finland's joining NATO um, for forcing them to continue attacking Ukraine. What they neglect to mention is that they have at one point attacked Finland, uh, hacked off pieces of Finland, and basically eliminated any trace of Finnish heritage or cultural language from that piece. They don't like talking about this. So, understandably, Finland has been a very vocal advocate of Ukraine and all of this from the beginning. And they share a border with Russia, so they have a lot to lose. They are among the countries who might be next on the list to attack for Russia. So what I like about this, I like the quote here in the middle, second paragraph. Um, there is a dislike of the fact that NATO has partners such as South Korea or say Japan. If North Korea is basically facilitating a war on the borders of Europe, we must be sure that it doesn't do so south of its borders. We talked about South Korea's concern. No, he brought up Japan very correctly. So yeah, once again, global influence, global impact, ripple effect, let that sink in. For those of you who are wondering, again, why Finland is so involved with this and why they're so vocal, despite being a fairly small country, Pop over to Wikipedia and look up the history of Karelia. Read that and you will understand. Pay particular attention to the part where Russia became involved.